Uh, it's March 2023. March is uh, Women's History Month. So I thought I would talk a bit about one of our uh, uh, he uh, historical heroines, heroines in the United States, uh, Frances Perkins, who was uh, one of the major driving forces behind the New Deal. So um, as I was looking for pictures, I came across this one of the women's suffragette movement, which uh, I, I just found this picture really moving. It's uh, the, the suffragettes actually had been going on for a while before 1890 and the women's movement to get the vote uh, went on for decades before that, but it was formally nationalized. The groups came together in 1890 and it still took them 30 years to get the vote, but they were dug in, as you can see, by their shoes. <laughs> I mean, they were determined, and they did it 30 years later. So the 19th Amendment, which gave women the vote, was passed in 1920, and nine years later, we got the Great Depression. So you can see here, upper left is a, a homeless family without a car. Uh, lower left is a food line. On the right is a bank run line. Now we've seen bank runs in this last week, but they don't look the same, but that's because it used to be that if you wanted to get your money out, you had to go stand in front of the teller, a teller's window, and now you can do it online. So most of the money moving out of the banks was uh, <clears throat> online movement but we could be heading into another <laughs> Great Depression. So in 1933, Frances Perkins became the first woman to serve in a presidential cabinet. She was FDR's Secretary of Labor for 12 years. She was called the driving force behind the New Deal. She was credited with formulating policies to shore up the national economy and with helping to create the modern middle class. And she was also Americans leading advocate for industrial safety and workers' rights rights. Uh, she was largely responsible for social security, unemployment insurance, and many other New Deal programs. Here you can see her standing beside, behind Roosevelt as he was signing the Social Security Act, and there was a stamp, <laughs> commemorative stamp made in her honor in 1980. So go, Francis. Uh, meanwhile, today, we may be moving into another Great Depression. So that's what the headlines, some of the headlines on various podcasts have been this last week. Uh, you see one there that says 2023 Great Depression starts Monday. That would have been Monday the 13th, but it didn't actually happen then. But we did, uh, things weren't looking good. We had uh, bank runs. We had the second and third largest U.S. bank bankruptcies the previous week. So Silicon Valley Bank was the second and Signature Bank was the third, third largest uh, following um, Washington Mutual, which was the first. And then um, this last week we had Credit Suisse collapsing. So next Monday could be the beginning of our next Great Depression. So I've seen on various podcasts or headlines on various podcasts. Um, and there are predictions that the market did tank last week, but it pulled back up, but there are predictions it's gonna take again. The FDIC and the Federal Reserve and the Treasury came through with some emergency action, but it didn't really solve the problem. So we need some sort of workaround. And we have, fortunately, we have a model. We have an example, which is what um, FDR and Francis Perkins and their whole team did during the 1930s. Today, we've got a Congress that's gridlocked over the debt ceiling, and they're clearly not going to be pumping out $5 trillion worth of infrastructure anytime soon. Um, but what FDR did in a similar, or F FDR's team, Jesse, Jesse uh, Jones, who was in charge of the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, what they did was a workaround where they took an existing um, public inst uh, government owned institution, the Recon Reconstruction Finance Corporation, which was set up to sit actually to salvage the banks, but they used that to fund rebuilding the entire country and later to fund World War II. So they started with a modest $500 million in capitalization. They issued bonds. 
Uh, the lender invested over $40 billion over the next 25 years with that, with that rather modest start. And uh, for, for all their accomplishments, they managed to actually return a profit to the government. Pretty amazing. And we could do that too. Uh, the RFC was called the fourth branch of government uh, and controlled or funded many programs. I won't try to read these off, but you can see what all they did during the New Deal and during World War II. Uh, their major funding achievements in the New Deal included the Public Works Administration, the Tennessee Valley Authority, the Works Progress Administration, the Rural, Rural Electrical Administration, the Electric Home and Farm Authority, the Homeowners Loan Corporation, Farm Credit, Etc. You can see that it did a lot, um, and it uh, so those were loans, but it also funded some projects directly, including the Oakland San Francisco Bay Bridge, the Pennsylvania Turnpike. I should say they were loans to um, local governments, um, uh, the Triborough Bridge project, and the entire rural electric electrification network, among others. And they did all that in that 25 years without raising taxes and without uh, triggering price inflation. So how did they do it? The secret was that all that money went to productive purposes. So they increased supply along with demand. There was more money out there. They put people to work. The workers spent the money on these new products or this new productivity that the economy was now capable of. So you can see in this chart that the inflation rate stayed pretty stable. You can't really see the dates, but anyway, right up till the Vietnam War and uh, Nixon, et cetera, uh, when we got <laughs> things unhooked. Post-war prosperity created a US middle class that was the envy of the world. Again, you could see that the upper class and the lower class, the percentiles, their, their incomes went up together all the way again all the way up to about the Vietnam War and um, the 1970s and then they split. The antidote to cost push inflation is not to cut demand but to increase productivity like in the Great Depression crises are when politicians are open to major changes. So that's my hope for now. I mean things are looking pretty dark but change is when or sorry, crises are when change happens and we just have to make sure that the change that we get is one that serves the people, serves the economy, re rebuilds the country. And we can do it just like it was done during the Great Depression. We can rebuild the country, restore our middle class and create a 21st century renaissance with a national infrastructure bank as in HR 3339. Thank you very much. <laughs>